guys. Uh, welcome back to the podcast. So every Monday, we're going to do a podcast about uh, inspirational travel stories. And today we are with uh, Andrew, is your son, uh, James. Jamie. Jamie, sorry. And? My name is Midi. Midi. So very nice to meet you all. Yes, yeah, you too. Yeah, we and do. thank you very much for being on the podcast today with us. Yeah, we're really pleased. Yeah, we really <laughs> look forward to talking to you. So before we get started, can you please all introduce yourself to us? Yeah, yeah. My name is uh, Andrew. I'm uh, originally from uh, from England. I've been living the last 20 years here in, in Denmark. All right. So, uh, I'm self-employed uh, design engineer, so when I'm not cycling, I'm... Uh, have a small office here where I'm working from home here. Awesome. Jamie? My name is Jamie and I'm 15 years old and I got adopted when I was two years old uh, and I'm from Peru, but now we live in Denmark here. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And as I said, my name is Mette. I'm 48. Um, and in the everyday life, I work as a, an accounts assistant. Awesome. Thank you very we much. We live in a, in a small town in, in Denmark. Well, what is the name of the town you live in? Uh, it's called Mowul. Mowul. So where, where is it located in, in Denmark? No, it's in the center of Denmark on a small island. All uh, right. The nearest town, town is called Odense, and that's where Hans Christian Andersen was born. How many people live there? So, oh, a few thousand in our town. <laughs> it's only small. So very quiet and relaxed. Yeah, yeah. Next to the next to the forest. Yeah, yeah. So we can go running here in the forest and cycling. <laughs> very lucky you are living in Kuala Lumpur. It's busy and clouded and <laughs> too many cars. Okay. <laughs> different to here uh, then. <laughs> yeah. Is it still raining? Uh, not today actually. The thunder was here like five minutes ago. Now it's quiet. So hopefully it's not gonna rain today. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys been cycling for many years so how everything started yeah i think for me i think i went on my first trip when i was about 10 years old 11 years old with my with my father and my uncle just a weekend trip and uh then i didn't cycle for or touring anyway for a few years just road racing but then when i was about in my early 20s i went cycling with a, a friend i have a good friend in england we cycled in wales and scotland and uh Iceland and Norway, and then uh, until we had Jamie, and then we started uh, cycling the three of us together. When he was uh, very small in a trailer in the beginning, where he was uh, <laughs> cycling on his own little bike, and then sleeping at lunchtime in the trailer. And then when he woke up, he would cycle again in the afternoon. And did you, your and then, wife? Uh, did your wife start cycling before? You cycled before as well, before you met in, him. <laughs> well, in Denmark, nearly everybody cycles oh, just right. as a transport. Um, I had been on a few uh, cycling holidays with my parents as uh, as a child, um, but but then we didn't take it up again until yeah when Jamie was little. Then we started cycling touring the the three of us and camping. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. So uh, four years ago, you went on a cycling trip all together. So how did you prepare such an adventure? Yeah, well. The first thing was practical things, like I built three uh, strong touring bikes. I didn't want to have any uh, issues with the, with the bikes on the roads in Central Asia. So I spent some time building three good bikes. So we have different uh, frame sizes, but all the components, they're the same, the brakes, the gears, everything is the same. So you only carry one set of spares. So I yeah. spent some time uh, putting this together. And practical things, we uh, rented our house out, we um, put our cars into storage and sold our caravan that we had before just just practical things just to get ready for us i mean how did you then, how do you went uh, how do you have the idea of doing a trip like this how did the idea come yeah, i think the idea yeah the idea i've had since i was young probably the first trip i did in wales with my friend from england i thought hmm, this is a good way of life you just as soon as you leave the car behind or the house behind just the uh the freedom you get, I think this is just an amazing way of life, just living here with just a few things in the bag and a tent and a simple way of life. And this is yeah, so something all, I want to do in the future. So you all quit your job? Yeah, I'm, I'm self-employed. So I just um, yeah, told my customers I wasn't going to be here for what one year. And, uh, 
And same and for I, you? I left, I left my job. Oh, you left your job. So we went on a big trip, yeah. So how did your boss react when you told him, oh, I'm going cycling for, for one year? <laughs> <laughs> no, but yeah, he was, yeah, he was okay about it. I told him, you know, a very early stage, so he had time to employ somebody else. So, Well, about Jamie? So that, wasn't, that wasn't a big thing. <laughs> well, about Jamie, he quit school for one year? Yes, he did. Yeah, yeah, he had a, a year off. He did a little bit of homework on the on the trip, but but not so much. But yeah. luckily, he was able to get back into his his own class again when he came back. Yeah, it must have been very difficult to don't go to school for one year. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just the yeah the feeling with uh, like you don't have your friends close to you anymore. Like uh, yeah, not so much social with your friends anymore. So, but then you. Have a lot of time with your mom and dad, like uh, yeah. family. So it's also good. I miss and new friends every day on the trip. Yeah, and new <laughs> friends every day on the trip. New <laughs> friends every day on the trip. Yeah. yeah. But you're not going to school. Were you happy not going to school for one year? Do you have a one year holidays? Yeah, I I love <laughs> I I like both things. I like to be in the school and I like to travel. So. Oh, yeah. that's good. I and I enjoyed the trip very much. Very much. So you you were only 11 years old at that time, yeah? Yes. Yeah. So what was the most challenging thing that you had to deal with? Um, the most challenging uh, was when we um, cycled from the Turkmenistan border to, uh, Uzbekistan. Uh, to, to Uzbekistan, the next country. Uh, yeah, because of the heat. And the heat was, it was very warm. Uh, because we were cycling in the desert and it, it was only 10 kilometers, but the heat just made it very hard. Yeah. And uh, yeah. So but it's like to battle with the heat and it's very hard to, to yeah. cycle. And yeah. And the water is very hot. So every time you <laughs> want to have something to drink, it's very hot. It yeah. tastes like tea. And tea. So that was, I think the most challenging thing. Yeah. But cycling every day was not a problem for you. No, that was not a problem. No, that's the easy part. <laughs> <laughs> that's the easy part. <laughs> Waking up in the morning. I don't know what, what time you used to wake up in the morning. Early morning or you wake up like whatever you want? Yeah, it depends on what country we're in. Normally, if we were in, say, Turkey or in Europe, then wake up around 8 o'clock. And then we have breakfast, pack the tent away. So we're on the road about 10 cycle until about four in the afternoon then try and find somewhere to camp yeah sometimes it's easy sometimes it takes two hours until we find a good place for <laughs> so <laughs> most most of the time you were while camping yeah we, uh, we try to do about five days camping and then we try and find a guest house or hotel just to go in the shower and uh so taking a shower the batteries only once a week again, yeah. taking a shower During? only once a week yeah, uh, yeah. So we kind of, if we find a street or a lake, and we, <laughs> yeah. we hop in that or the sea or whatever we find, yeah, we just. Uh, so it was not a problem for all of you to not taking shower. No, no. Well, we got get used to it. I was uh, ten years ago. I would have said it was a really big problem. Yeah. But yeah, now I got used to it, so it's it's okay. But of course, and after a few days out in the in the nature while camping, then you really appreciate a shower. Exactly. I, I know my, my wife will never, ever come with me because she needs to take a shower every day. So mm-hmm. I know that it will be a no-no for, for her. Yeah. <laughs> I would have said the same 10 years ago, but I have changed now. All right. So maybe you should talk to her so she can come with me. Yeah, could be, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because she knew that when I was in, in Mongolia, when I suckered in Mongolia, I spent 15 days, almost 15 days with no shower because I was in the desert and there was no yeah. shower. And when I crossed the border from Mongolia to China, I could smell myself. So it's really bad. <laughs> <laughs> really, really bad. So what was the most memorable experience for all of you? So for Andrew, for Mitty and Jamie, your most uh, memorable experience, starting with Andrew? You know, I, I enjoy all of it. I enjoy the whole day from the moment we wake up and look at the map and where we're we going and just enjoy everything. But maybe the, if I have to pick one thing, probably, um, yeah, wild camping I enjoy a lot. But if it, one thing is probably uh, in Turkey. In Turkey, we had a fantastic experience just about everywhere we went. People were so friendly. 
If I just pick one thing, maybe there's one night when we turned into a town. It was a small village near the Alara Valley in the, in the center of the middle of Turkey. We just pulled up in this small town and there was a, a piece of a grass, grassy area where we could, uh, thought, oh, maybe a good place to camp. And there was already another family there because this was a uh, Ramadan at this time when we cycled through Turkey. All right. So we just pulled up and then we asked, is it okay to camp here? Or just sign, yeah, it's fine, no problem. So we start setting the tent up and then this family, within five minutes, Jamie's playing football with their with their kids and uh, we're setting the tent up. Nice. And then after 10 minutes, uh, they come over and they, uh, in Turkish, they ask us if you want to join them for dinner because they eat. When when the sun goes down at sunset, then they have their dinner when, during Ramadan. Yeah. We say, um, so we get Google Translate because we don't understand Turkish. <laughs> and we find out that they want to invite us for dinner with them. So we say... Okay, but do uh, yeah, we would love to do that. But we, do we bring our own food? We've got everything with us. No, no, no. Just come, just come and sit and enjoy the, the evening with us. Very nice. So they'd already prepared the dinner for their family, but uh, they invited yeah. us over and allowed us to, to spend the whole evening with them, sitting on these blankets. Just uh, even though we couldn't speak Turkish, but with uh, Google Translate, we managed to have a great evening. Yeah, that's something we couldn't do. Just, Something we couldn't do like 10 years ago or 15 years ago. Is, yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah that's so true. Now yeah. with technology, technology has a good good point sometimes. Mm. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, we couldn't really communicate. But with Google Translate, we managed to get a whole evening where we could speak to each other. and uh, That's awesome. Speak that's to this really, really kind family. It was a, that was a good experience. That's great. Jamie? Yeah, my uh, the thing I really loved uh, were to like climb up mountains. Uh, I like to cycle up mountains because I like when you when you on the top of the mountain, then you have the per- a very beautiful view from the top, and I enjoy it just to yeah, I really enjoy the view. You like the challenge <laughs> and the <laughs> challenge and the challenge and the challenge. When he oh. sees a mountain, he's just gone. Yeah. Just- <laughs> uh, you you said that he doesn't like hills. You don't like when he's steep. Don't you? Yeah, he, he does. He doesn't like the heat. Uh, the heat he doesn't like when it gets too hot. But the, the, the hair you don't mind? No, no, no. that's not a problem. No. All right. <laughs> he's, from, he's from uh, 4,000 meters altitude in Peru. So, uh, wow. That's near the Titicaca good. Lake. So, I think his body, his lungs are just made for high mountains. So, when he gets to the high mountains, then he's just. Easy. It's just nowhere to be seen. <laughs> so you just go up and you wait for your parents. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so then nice. we start putting more and more food in his bags. In the beginning, you only had a little bit of weight. <laughs> uh, be careful they didn't add rocks maybe in your panniers as well. That's we just slow you down. <laughs> <laughs> That's mean. <laughs> what about you, Mitty? Um, I would say again the, the friendliness and generosity of people that has made a big impression of all of us because we didn't expect that but that was a, that was amazing to experience friendly smiling people that wanted to talk to us and hear where we came from and waving to us on the road and tapping the horns and the cars just you know friendly hello <laughs> uh, and that was especially in the Muslim countries that we experienced that yeah. Um, yeah. So, so definitely, definitely that. Mm. But and also say uh, when we had um, a tough day, maybe with uh, strong winds or where we didn't know where to sleep in the night or where to camp, and things seemed to be a bit, a bit hard, and we was under pressure. And then when you get to the end of the day and everything works out, you find a place to sleep or a shelter from the wind, and then you just think, ah, oh, and then everything just seems fantastic. <laughs> That's it can still be like a s- simple things, but you get to a point where you just are really pleased about the very basic things like shelter and food and warmth. Yeah, and then exactly. you appreciate that a lot all of a sudden mm. when it's been taken away from you. Yeah. Do you miss it not being on the road? Yeah, we do. We do at times. Yeah, because we like going cycling and camping, but at the moment, we do it as much as we can in the summertime in, in Denmark, and we go in the weekends and in the summer holiday. Right. So, we, so we still get out, you know, as much mm. as we can. Did you have two tents, or was it all of you in one tent? Okay. Yeah, we just have one tent. Actually, we have a big tent. It's a, a four-man four tent. tent. Yeah. All right. Was it not, like, I know that, you know, when you're very tired at the end of the day, was it hard to be all of you? Because you're already all together on the road and to be... Together again at night, 
was it hard or no no i, I mean i mean maybe for jamie <laughs> yeah <laughs> maybe I think, he seemed, I think he seemed quite content we had a good time in the evening yeah. and in the tent right. and i would say mm -hmm. we also a bit luxurious campus it's quite a big tent to have on a on a, on a bike but uh, it also meant that it was a bit cold and we could sit inside the tent mm. and eat our dinner so we had a good a yeah, good time good. there yeah enjoyed and, ourselves yeah and you used to cook every almost every night as well you have a little stove and cook every night yeah when, we, when we're wild camping we do yeah um if we turn up in a, a town then we go out for dinner you know we um we, we enjoy ourselves as well we um Go for coffee when we that's one of the best things stopping in a small little coffee shop somewhere and oh so yeah <laughs> we enjoy all of it yeah but especially while camping with an amazing view or something that's uh, so when, when you cook what would you eat on the on the road well, if you cook your own food what would you eat yeah it depends where we are we eat whatever we can find in the shop um it differs from country to country and we just go into the supermarket and especially in kyrgyzstan okay we don't have a big choice and uh Yeah. All of a sudden, you can't get milk or cheese, and then oh wow, now we can get milk and cheese again. Or <laughs> some countries, you can't get any uh, any food from 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 pigs and uh, pork meat, but and all of a sudden it comes back again. So we just get whatever we can. But in, while in, camping, we try to make something we can just put it. We put we have a small stove. Um, we put some lentils or pasta and chop some vegetables up and a little bit of sausage or something. So you had a big that... pot as well. You carry the big pot and pans. Yeah. yeah, yeah, about this size kind of thing. Yeah. Nice for three people. <laughs> yeah. So we just let that bubble away for 20 minutes or so, and then eat that with some bread. We try and pick up some bread during the day somewhere, and uh, so we did that a lot. Yeah. So. But like vegetables and lentils or pastas, we we could find that everywhere. So mm. yeah. So that was the, the standout on uh, yeah. in a wild camping, you know. And maybe easier to to carry when it's already in the can. Um, was it the lentils in the can or like uh, fresh? No, because it's just you know the the dry ones in a, in ah, a the bag. dry wine. Okay, dry yeah, wine. Yeah, they'll be they'll be boiled. Yeah, yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah, yeah, that that worked out well yeah, and that's easy. easy. Yeah, yeah. And we would pick up some nuts and and uh, raisins uh, wherever we could, so we had a bag of those always. And uh, nice. Pick up some fresh vegetables during the day. This kind of thing, whatever we could find, really. We eat anything. So. <laughs> and a part of this, did you have any issues on the road? And if yes, how did you deal with it? Didn't really have any mechanical issues with the bikes. We had a few punctures, but nothing really. Um, I think what I would say is an issue was in East Turkey, we was made aware that there could be bears uh, when we were wild camping. So I panicked a bit. And for a while, I'm, while I refused to wild camp. So instead of we put the tent up next to petrol stations. All right. And then we felt, felt safer there. But have you felt at any point uh, like, oh my God, it's dangerous. We should not be there. And... Only for the bears. <laughs> Only for the bears, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But not anywhere else. Like you've never been robbed or marked or anything on the no. road, yeah? No, no. We only no. met kind people. Yeah. Only kind people, yeah. <laughs> Only people giving us, when we pulled up in one fuel station in Turkey, we met a guy on a scooter and he was asking us where we were going. And, and uh, she says, uh, how long are you here? I said, wait five minutes. So he was gone. T five minutes, he come back with a big bag of fruit from his garden. And he uh, <laughs> says, wait two minutes. Then he went to somebody else's garden. So um, this kind of thing, we'd happened everywhere, especially in Turkey. So. Especially in Turkey. So mm. you, you went to Iran as well, yeah? Yeah, 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 but not, yeah. not cycling, um, but we, we visited Iran for 10 days. Yeah. 10 days, yeah. So how many countries and uh, kilometers have you achieved in, on this journey, on your world trip? On this trip, I think it was uh, 18 countries altogether. Wow. Some of them we didn't cycle in for different reasons. Uh, like Iran, I couldn't cycle in because I'm a... A UK citizen, so I couldn't get a visa. These two got a visa in uh, one day because they're from Denmark. <laughs> All right. So I couldn't actually cycle in uh, Iran without a guide. So we had to have a, a minibus pick us up at the border and drive us uh, to uh, Turkmenistan. So you put the bike so they, in the van? Yeah, they, they put the bike in the back of the van, yes. Yeah, so. Because oh. Iran, Iran was the country I wanted to visit most of all, but that was the one that gave me the most problems to get the visa. Yeah. But uh, we managed to uh, find a good travel agency that helped us out, and we got a, 
So you Got told me last time that you have a Danish passport now, so you can go back to Iran. Yeah, yeah. Last week I became a Danish citizen as well. So next time I can go, go back to Iran and cycle there. That's my big uh, dream. Do you have an idea about how many kilometers have you cycled during the, the trip? Yeah, this one was 9,200. Wow. This was cycling. Yeah, then of course we spent time in a minibus and other things and backpacking in India as well. But, uh, With an average of how many kilometers per day? Uh, it depends on the, I think in Turkey we were probably doing about what, 70? Yeah, 70, 70 yeah. per day. The roads were good and camping was easy and... Uh, if we think about Kyrgyzstan, it's probably 30 kilometers a day with uh, completely bumpy, stony, rough roads. You, you cycled Turkmenistan? No, no. Turkistan. We had a minibus there as well, yeah. Okay, minibus as well over there, yeah. Uh, so we only had a five-day visa, so it's... Um, yeah, it's And impossible. it was in the, middle of, in the middle of July, it would have been too hot, and we didn't have time to do it. So, <laughs> so we took a minibus and then started again in Uzbekistan. And um, do you have any adventures in mind for your next trip that you would like to go all together? Oh, we have uh, we have ideas in mind uh, Lots all, of ideas, the, all the time. <laughs> if you're thinking at some point maybe South America could be interesting. Yeah. Uh, and sometimes we also talked about it would be good to do the same trip again because now we know what it's like, so it would be easier <laughs> this time because you know everywhere like we're you know, the mountains are and where the rough roads are and where the supermarkets are no supermarkets, so it'll be easy <laughs> to do it again. And also and this trip, we think, was very special because we could uh, go through so many countries, so it was very varied. It changed a lot all the time. So mm -hmm. that was a good thing about this trip. And if you go to South America, do you have an idea of which country would you like to visit? Yeah, we talked about Argentina. Um, Argentina, Ushuaia, yeah. maybe Ch Chile and Bolivia and Peru um, yeah. could be good. But you already been cycling in Peru, all of you? No, no, not not cycling in Peru. We visited Peru twice, but we haven't been cycling there. No. Okay, cool. They have a, on the they have a beautiful road that's one of the highest roads in the world in Peru. Yeah, can't remember the name of the road. Peru. Yeah, yeah. No, I don't remember the name yet, but uh, when we drove, we drove, we had a Land Cruiser last time we were there. I think it was 5,500 meters the one day we went over wow. on the way to Puno, where Jamie's uh, originally from. <laughs> and maybe the Salt Lake in Bolivia? Yeah, that would be good. Yeah, I've seen some videos of that. It looks good. Yeah, that was, yeah, it's on my bucket list as well. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I can imagine. <laughs> and um, do you have a website or Facebook page where people can follow you? Yeah, we have, we have, we have a, a website page. We have a, a Facebook page uh, that we used on the trip because we made, uh, we made these small, short videos every day, really. It wasn't actually the idea. We, had no, we didn't talk about doing this before we started, but we made these short videos, 10 minutes or 15 minutes for our family. All right. Um, which we ended up doing 257 of these in the end. We have never planned from the beginning. It just kind of happened. So we... Uh, <laughs> We filmed in the day and uploaded these every evening to uh, to Facebook. Um, nice. And uh, that was on Facebook. So our Facebook page we used on the trip. But since we came back, all these have been uploaded now to YouTube. Nice. So we have a, a YouTube channel where they're all organized in a uh, yeah, playlist. So it's you can actually go back to the very, very beginning, the first day. So you watch, can let them know. The trip. You can let them know the name of your page and I will have it in the description. So what is the name of the, the page? Yeah, our page is uh, letsgobiking.com with a dash between the let's and the go. All so, right. <laughs> letsgobiking.com, yeah. Facebook, let's go YouTube. YouTube and, uh, easy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And do you have any advice for people that would like to undertake uh, like a cycling trip with their family? So when they have a, like a young kid with them and they're not too sure what or how to begin this trip, what would be your advice for them? Yeah, first advice is just to give it a go and don't don't wait. Um, if you have these kind of ideas, uh, just just do it. Um, because you never know what's going to happen tomorrow or next week or next year. So um, we decided uh, 
Jamie was at a good age when he was 11. He was strong. We knew he was strong on a bike. We knew he was adventurous. So uh, we just went for it. Didn't, don't wait. Um, we should never know what's going to happen. <laughs> so just, but it, and it doesn't matter if you cycle 10 kilometers a day or 20 or 30. It doesn't really matter. The main yeah. thing is just to get out on the road and just see what happens. And if you, and you can always improve day by day and to do more and more. And yeah, 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 yeah. Just, just get going, and your fitness will improve, and everything will get easier. Um, the first trip we did in Sweden, we cycled for six weeks, and we we didn't really know after a week. Do we uh, do we still want to sleep in a tent, or we're we going to get bored? But after six weeks, we were, we were, we just wanted to carry on. So uh, so nice. just just get going. <laughs> Would you like to add anything, Miti? Um, no, I think we have uh, said the most important things. <laughs> yeah. Do you want to say anything else? Anything else that we'd like to add to the people that listen in this podcast or any advice? I think one of the main things is uh, just don't uh, listen too much to what the media is telling you because uh, if you listen to the media, yeah, you you'll probably anywhere. be scared to go anywhere. You'll uh, be scared to leave your own house at the moment. But we didn't, uh, we didn't find the real world to be anything like what the media tell us it is. So my advice would be uh, to, to check out some... Uh, there's lots of people making these short videos on YouTube, where, especially touring cyclists are doing it a lot now. Yeah, exactly. And that's what I, I did before this trip. I um, followed other people that were cycling around the world. So not watching travel documentaries or watching the news, but just watching real people cycle touring and just seeing what the real life is like. And that's, that's completely nice. different. <laughs> completely different to what the media tell you. You know, we yeah. only experience good things. So yeah, uh, People are nicer than, than you think. Exactly. There is a good human around there. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 There is a bad one, but mostly good. Yeah, we, <laughs> only, we only experience the good ones. And... That's good. Yeah. Thank you very, very much for being on this podcast today with us, guys. Oh, thank you very much yeah, for having us. You, yeah. yeah. So, like I said at the beginning, we're going to have this podcast every Monday. So, if you're watching this podcast and if you want to join this podcast, you can uh, send me a message uh, on the email in the description below and I will be in touch with you. Thank you very much, guys. See you next yes, time. Thank you. Bye-bye.